Hi, now I am going to concentrate on problem solving method. Problem solving presupposes the existence of problems in the teaching learning situation. A problem is an abstraction of some sort to the attainment of an objective. A sort of difficulty which does not enable the individual to reach the goal easily. This model deals the method of problem solving method. Problem solving method and introduction. The child is curious by nature. He wants to find out solutions of many problems which sometimes are bustling even to the adults. The problem solving method is one which involves the use of the process of problem solving of relative thinking or reason. Problem solving method as the name indicated begins with the statement of the problem that challenges the statement to find the solutions. Definition of problem solving method. Problem solving is the set of events in which human beings was rules to achieve some goals is said by Gagne. As well, according to Aspel, problem solving involves concept formations and discovery of learning. Problem solving is a plan attacks upon a difficulty or perplexity for the purpose of finding satisfactory solution is said by Ritz Kriya. Main objectives of problem solving method. The main objectives of problem solving method are to stimulate the reflective and creative thinking of the students. It involves the thought process that results from the doubt, a perplexity of the problem. The approach leads to the formulations of generalization that is useful in future situations involving the solutions of similar problems. The solution of the problem, whatever is its nature, practical or informational involves the process of reflective thinking. Next, I am going to concentrate the steps involved in problem solving method. Then step number one, identifying and defining the problem. The student should be able to identify and clearly define the problem. The problem that has been identified should be interesting, challenging and motivating for the students to participate in exploring. The step number two, analyzing the problem. The problem should be carefully analyzed as to what is given and what is to be found out. Given facts must be identified and expressed if necessary in symbolic form. Then step number three, formulating tentative hypothesis. Formulating hypothesis means preparation of a list of possible reasons the occurrence of the problem. Formulating of hypothesis doubts thinking and reasoning powers of the child. The focus at this stage on hypothesizing, searching for a tentative solution to the problem. Then step number four, testing the hypothesis. Appropriate method should be selected to test the validity of the tentative hypothesis as a solution to the problem. If it is not proved to the solutions, the students are asked to formula, formulate alternative hypothesis and procedure. Then last step and fifth step, verification of the result or checking the result. No conclusion should be accepted without being properly verified. At this step, the students are asked to determine their results and substantiate the expected solutions. The students should be able to make generalization and apply it to their daily life. Next, I'm showing some of the examples of problem solving method. Hi, I'm Steve Jones and I'm going to show you how to solve a linear equation. The first thing to understand about an equation is the word equal. What it says is whatever is on this side is equal to whatever is on that side. So 2x minus 3 is equal to 9. It's not the same as 9, but it is equal to 9. So you don't know what x is, but it doesn't matter. You know that that 2x minus 3 and 9 are equal. Now if you've got two equal things and you do the same to both of them, even though that you've changed them, they are still equal. So if I've got 9 pounds of lead here and 9 pounds of lead here and I take 3 pounds off here and 3 pounds off here, I've got 6 pounds of lead here and 6 pounds of lead here. So it's still equal. So my equation, I do exactly the same. If I do the same to both sides, then they're still equal. So what about if I add 3 to this side? I must add 3 to that side. Because they're equal, if they're equal, they stay equal. Now, 2x minus 3 plus 3, well, minus 3 plus 3 
There's nothing. So on the left hand side I will have just 2x. And on the right hand side 9 plus 3. So it's 2x minus 3 plus 3 is 0, so I don't need it, equals 9 plus 3, 12. All right. I can get rid of that. I don't need that now. It just confuses things. Okay. Now I've got to do the same to both sides. I've got two x's here. Well, what happens if I divide by 2? Like that. If I do it this side, I must do it this side. Divide by 2. Okay? So what do I get? Well, 2x divided by 2, you know I can cancel those 2. I get 1. In fact, I get x. And on this side, 12 divided by 2 is 6. So the result is that x is equal to 6. This is the solution to this equation. I can try it here, can't I? Try it back. Put x is 6 here. 2 times 6 is 12. Minus 3 is 9. Correct. Okay, so let's just go through the points. First of all, the most important thing, the two sides are equal. You've got to make sure they always stay equal. Do the same to both sides. Here I add 3. Here I divide by 2. I'm doing the same to both sides. Remember, if there are more terms on this side, that is 2x plus 2y, I would have to divide the 2y by 2 as well. Just be careful. If you're careful, you will never have problems solving linear equations ever again. Next, I'm point outing some of the merits of problem solving method merits. It helps in developing good study habits and reasoning powers. It helps to improve and apply knowledge and experiences. This method stimulates thinking of the child. It helps to develop the power of expression of the child. The child learns how to act in new situations. It develops group feelings while working together. Teachers become familiar with his peoples. It develops analytical, critical and generalization ability of the child. This method helps in maintaining discipline in the class. Next, I am list outing some of the demerits of problem solving method. Demerits. This is not suitable for lower classes. There is lack of suitable books and reference for children. It is not economical. It is wastage of time and energy. Teachers find it difficult to cover the prescript syllabus. To follow this method, talented teachers are required. There is always doubt of drawing wrong conclusions. Mental activities are more emphasized as compared to physical activities. Conclusion. Problem solving method can be effective method for teaching mathematics in the hand of able and resourceful teachers of mathematics. Problem solving method is an appropriate method for teaching mathematics. There are various approaches to problem solving, namely analytic and synthetic and inductive and deductive approaches. Problem solving method makes use of any of this or combination of these approaches. Thank you one and all.